work on your personal writing because we believe that as you all write, you're more comfortable working with students and their writing. Um, we want to work with those round tables and thinking of those lesson ideas that can go in a classroom for the length of a class period. And then um, Mish and I are going to sprinkle in all kinds of content reading ideas. Um, and we want to you know, introduce you to two or three of those in the morning, too, just things that you can take back and use right away with any type of text. This would be one of those. And it's a little bit complicated, but it's going to make sense in just a second. Um, the idea behind this reading activity, and I call it a text template, <coughs> is to get students to preview a text and think about all parts of the text. With all of these great nonfiction texts, there are so many things that they do these days that they used to not do, like put in the graphics and put in these um, subtitles and nice big titles, those kinds of things, um, that help students navigate a text. But what students like to do when they get something, and I'm sure you all know this, is they grab the text, they look at the questions at the end, and they try to find the answers to them, and they set it aside. And so this text template is just another way to get them to think about all the parts of the text that can help them learn the concept instead of just the answers to the questions that they have in the end. Um, if you take the viruses and you put it side by side like this, and then you take the text template, <coughs> and this side is up. You can put it underneath it or to the side. The boxes match up. So the big box at the bottom is the gentleman with all the new stuff coming out right there. So these little boxes match up with these. The long, narrow box down here matches up with this caption. And then each one of the little boxes matches up with that page. So we're going to preview the text first. In this box and in these boxes, write down some things that you see. I started with the pictures first because when students look at pages, more often than not, their, their eye is going to go directly to that picture. So might as well explore that first. Go where you would naturally go and think about it before going to the rest of the text. themselves or to a partner or whatever, but I know you guys can't see it because it didn't copy off very well. Um, it says, get to know your viruses. At the far left, the deadly Ebola virus. Next to it, rabies virus is caught in the act of invading a cell. Third from the left is the virus that causes AIDS. And on the right is herpes simplex, the virus that causes cold sores. So, um, <coughs> just write a summary sentence that would summarize that caption. I'll read it one more time. Get to know your viruses. At the far left lurks the deadly Ebola virus. Next to it, a rabies virus is caught in the act of invading a cell. Third from the left is the virus that causes AIDS. And on the right is the herpes simplex, the virus that causes cold sores. And our task is to write what? A, a summary. Oh, of what did the caption say? Let's cast the caption the pictures. Yeah. In the little box where the caption would be. <laughs> I don't know how many kids that I've read this that have totally skipped the title of the thing that they're reading. So we'll write that. And then, in the part underneath the title, we'll just write, um, and, and as a teacher, you've got all kinds of things that you can write there. You could write <coughs> questions that they might have regarding the topic. You could write predictions of things that they think is going to be in the, um, the article itself. You could um, write, you know, everything that they know 
about the topic so far, anything at all, really, could go in this box. Um, what we'll do is read, read the first paragraph and write one big question in that first folder. Um, you don't hear a lot about Ebola, really, now. It was something you heard a lot about maybe a few years back, but um, what's going on with Ebola now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ebola? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, you could do that. Um, it, and it depends upon what you want the students to learn from your content. So, you know, this might be, you might want to pull specific strains from your curriculum and do more with that. I mean, I've, I've done this in the past just to teach kids that when we read text, we read all of the text and not just the words. We don't just start at no doubt about it, because that's where a lot of my kids would start. Um, we can take some time and go where our eyes go first and think about it, and that's going to allow us to understand a text more. Um, <coughs> we were talking about, go ahead, you can check um, I, I teach at Smithton Middle School. I am the uh, fellows mentor there and the language arts. Um, department chair. So I actually am in classrooms, not teaching um, my own students, but teaching in the middle school. Middle school kids. And um, my sixth graders, I, I did this with my sixth grade class, or a sixth grade class, um, probably oh, just a bit ago. And we did it over the um, black play. And it's amazing. When we, it was something that we spent time on. It took a class, it took two class periods. Um, but the depth of understanding that came out of the reading was fantastic. I mean, it was something that the kids could talk about and were talking about for the next couple of months because they had taken the time to slow down and look at the pictures and ask questions and think about it. So, middle school. Um, I'm, I'm sure that it would be easily modifiable for elementary or um, even higher. Mm -hmm. It's just a pretty basic. So. Other questions? Well, she 